the first thing I do want to talk about is just this interaction between 2D and 3D and how we're setting up files. And um, I'm going to first demonstrate that by importing a couple of terrains. And uh, in this first DGN that I've opened here, I am in a 3D model. So this DGN currently only has a 3D model in it. And I'm going to import a terrain in this file here. And, you know, coming at this from a best practices standpoint, we really do recommend that your terrains and surveys are, those are 3D elements. They um, really know 2D component to them. So in most other cases, most other files, we're starting in 2D. And it makes sense to work in 2D, but for surveys and for surfaces, we're going to be working in 3D primarily. So let's start with a 3D file here. I'm just going to import a terrain off of my hard drive. And I'm just going to grab this uh, DTM here. And let me just give it a boundary feature definition. Okay, so I'm going to pick a feature definition and import it. And when I do that, I'll close the import dialog, hit fit, and there it has imported my terrain into 3D. Nothing crazy or surprising there. Um, I do want to point out, though, that not only has it imported the terrain, but it's also imported some other stuff that are important to us there. So let me show that. It has imported the terrain element here. It's in 3D, but it's also imported all the design standards that this terrain needs. So if we look, um, we can see in the feature definitions that it has imported uh, the terrain feature definitions that it needs, this exterior boundary. It's also imported the element templates that those feature definitions are using to control what the symbology looks like. It has these feature symbologies, surface feature symbologies are what's calling those element templates. And it's already imported some annotation groups. Um, and you might think, why did an annotation group come in here with the terrain? And that is because all the standards that this terrain needs to display and display like I want it to display are going to be stored here in the DGN with this terrain so that I can attach this terrain DGN to any other file. And when I go to do my profiling in this case, I already have set up when I cut my profile how I want this terrain to display in the profile. And I want it to show strip grades down at the bottom of the profile, right? So, you know, the concept there is that when I bring it, import the terrain, it's going to not only import the terrain, but it's going to import all the design standards that it needs for that terrain for, you know, our downstream workflows there. What standard does not get copied into the DGN. And um, so what's happening here is we're very familiar with this concept of having DGN libs attached that are storing all of our standards and they're copied into the DGN when we use them. It's true for levels, level libraries. We have a lot of level libraries attached, but it's only copying the level into the DGN when I use it. Feature definitions. I have a lot of feature definitions in my library, but it's only pulling in the ones that it needs for the elements that I import. So we're familiar with this concept of it pulling standards into the DGN that it uses from the libraries, but there is one particular standard that does not get copied in and it stays residing in the DGN lib. And I've given you time to think about it here. And the answer to that is text favorites. So for Whatever reason, the reason I mention this is because, again, it comes up a lot on the support lines there. Text favorites are kind of a special case to the standards here. And these do not get copied into the active DGN. You know, it kind of frustrates us sometimes that this is a little inconsistent with the rest, but I have to trust the, at this point, trust our very smart developers that there's a good reason they're doing that. But text favorites stay in the DGNlib library and they're used when they're called, you know, by the feature definitions, but they're not copied into the active file. So that's something I always like to cover because it's a little bit different. It's not the norm when we talk about standards being copied into the DGN lib there. Like I said, I'm sure they have very good reasons for it. I know it's been debated a lot 
amongst the product management and developer, but that is just something to be aware of. Not a problem, but just something to be aware of. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.